Hello, my name's Fiona and in this short video I'd like to show you how to examine a patient's field of vision. It is an important part of the visual function of an eye. It is always important to test the visual field in any patient in whom you cannot find the cause of their visual loss. This commonly happens when patients have suffered strokes, where damage occurring to the occipital lobe of the brain, where the visual cortex can be found, causes a homonymous hemianopia. Here, visual acuity and fundoscopy may be entirely normal, and yet the patient will have profound loss of their temporal and nasal fields. So how do we start? First of all, you should introduce yourself to the patient, explain what you're going to do, and ensure that your hands are clean. You should be seated directly in front of the patient, your knees should be close but not touching, and the seats adjusted so that you and the patient are facing to each other at the same height. Instruct the patient that you would like them to look directly at you. Then stretch out your arms to the side with your palms facing the patient and fingers pointing towards the ceiling. Ask the patient to point to the hand that then moves. This will identify any significant temporal field loss. Next, ask the patient to cover their left eye with the palm of their left hand. If the fingers are used instead, this can press on the eye and blur the vision when the left eye comes to be tested. You need to do the same unless you can comfortably close your left eye. Remember, you're trying to compare your own visual field with your patient's, assuming of course yours is normal. Ask the patient to then look at your face with their right eye. Ask them if any part of you is missing. Next, ask them to look directly at your right eye and ask them to see how many fingers they can see. You should present different numbers of fingers to the four essential quadrants of the visual field. Next, ask the patient to relax, hands down, blink and repeat as above on the left eye. Remember what you see and record. For further refinement of this procedure, test each individual quadrant again on the right and the left eye using either a white pin or finger. Again, record your findings. More sensitive and central defects can be looked for using a red pin. There, that's the basics. This is a very useful clinical skill and can give very useful information. It looks good when practiced well and clear instructions are given to the patient. Good luck.